You may have not heard of the MC-21, but it could very well be the next must-have short-haul aircraft filling our skies, putting Airbus and Boeing on notice. But building a new Boeing 737 competitor from scratch isn't easy, especially in a country filled to the brim with politics, this plane faces a future of flying high or becoming a footnote in history. In today's video, we will explore what the aircraft is actually like, what challenges await for the firm to get it to the market, and how does it compare to the Airbus A320 and Boeing 737. Let's jump in. At the end of the Cold War, saw Russian airlines turn away from Soviet planes and embrace Western technology, filling their fleets with Western-made Airbus and Boeing aircraft that were, at the time, seen as more reliable and advanced technological products than their Russian-made counterparts. But one Russian aerospace firm has kept that commercial aviation dream alive with the MC-21 design, taking the very best ideas from the Airbus A320 and Boeing 737 to make a true world-class competitor in their words. The MC-21-300, pronounced MS-21, the first version to pass flight tests, will be able to carry up to 211 passengers in a single cabin configuration and can nearly match the 737 and A320 in range. And it has the state airline support as well, with Aeroflot backing the firm with an order for 50 MC-21 aircraft and options for 35 more in the near future. But all of this may be moot if the aircraft fails to enter production and become a failed attempt by the Russian aviation industry to reclaim its former glory. The MC-21 story begins back in 2006 with the United Aircraft Corporation of Russia. They realized the growing demand in aerospace over the next 20 years would mean at least 500 new aircraft for Russian airlines, a lucrative aviation pie that could be captured by its domestic aviation industry. Thus, they set out with a plan for a new type of short-haul aircraft, codenamed the Yak-242, a similar project from the 90s that never went ahead. They would have the following conditions for the plan. First, the new UAC design was to seat 130 to 170 passengers over a 5,000 kilometer or 3,000 nautical mile range, ideally to replace the aging TU-154. Plus, the plane would need to be 20 to 25% more efficient than Airbus A320 or the Boeing 737 next generation competitor, with 15% lower weight, 20% lower operating costs, and 15% lower fuel consumption. And it would be far more advanced than its counterparts, with a carbon fiber wing and tail, fly-by-wire controls in a glass cockpit, and feature cutting-edge technologies well beyond the 30-plus year-old designs of both the Airbus and Boeing counterpart. UAC also plans there to be three models, the MC-21-300 with a Western-made engine, the MC-21-310 that has Russian-built PD-14 engines, and a shortened MC-21-200 that can seat up to 132 passengers and fly 3,500 nautical miles. This last version will likely not go ahead as it covers much of the same market as the Sukhoi Superjet 100 and its future stretch, the Superjet 1300. The goal was for this plane to enter service in 2012 for an initial target price of 35 million US dollars, 20 million US below the similar 737-700, a shocking upset to the aviation world market. Airlines would essentially be able to buy two MC-21s for the same price as a previous generation Boeing 737, something that might be too good to pass up. 
Lastly, this plane design will be able to be made fast, with all the components built in Russia and a tremendous backlogs in both the Boeing and Airbus lines, resulting in the MC-21 filling in the market demand gap. Well, at least in the good times before the current crisis. Confident, the team launched the new program in 2007, planning a 2016 introduction with Russian carrier Aeroflot. Future years would see these goals adjusted, such as lowering the general efficiency gain to 10 to 15%, with the factory producing up to 120 airframes per year past the year 2025. Certainly an ambitious goal, but the fact of the matter is, if you're not flying in an MC-21 in 2020, then something must have gone wrong. For UAC, creating a prototype would ultimately end up being a much harder dream to realize. Thanks to Russian protectorism, the firm had to rely on local suppliers to essentially reinvent the wheel for Western avionics, landing gears, hydraulics, power systems, and even the engines, delaying the rollout of the first prototype. Something that had been done in partnership with a Western firm like Airbus or Boeing could have been done in far less time. You see, this MC-21-300 was designed to be totally isolated from the international aviation supply chain, using entirely made Russian parts and being a 100% homegrown product. Something that was tough to do considering Russia had only limited commercial aviation success in recent years, and of course, thanks to politics, they had been cut off, which we'll get to in a moment. Six years since the launch, the first prototype has rolled out of the hangar for ground testing with Western engines and a new name, the MC-21-300. These engines would be used as the Russian ones were not yet ready to be deployed, but the plane would fly and herald in the beginning of the new Russian aviation age. Well, kind of. For one, it is easy to build a few prototypes, but another to actually enter full production, even with 175 orders on the books and 150 more intentions to buy. The challenges that UAC face are more than just building a new plane and reinventing the wheel to compete with Boeing and Airbus. Since last year, Russia has faced Western sanctions that have cut off access to technology, components and funding including the ability to actually build the carbon fiber wing that is necessary for this aircraft, taking months to figure out a domestic supply of materials. The Russian government has then had to step in and give multiple rounds of subsidies to the carrier in an effort to save the program, costing billions of dollars and delaying the entry into service well into 2021. Other challenges have included getting the aircraft certified in other regions. So far, they have started the process in Russia and EU, but the goal of getting the FAA to sign off on a Russian design is a little bit more difficult. In addition, the airframe maker needs to face the twin challenges of rolling this plane out internationally. Parts and training. Airlines will need a good second-hand market of parts that they can source from to keep flying when encountering aircraft on ground situations. They will also need their pilots to undergo training to learn how to fly and maintain these aircraft. This all might be too much for a Western airline that is already committed to Western aircraft like Boeing and Airbus, but for Asian markets and Africa, they might leap at the chance to secure what is essentially an A320 or 737 for half the price. And in half the time it takes for the latter Western manufacturers to deliver the aircraft. So far, four prototype aircraft have been built, one of which is powered by the new Russian PD-14 engines and took flight just this month. The team is confident that the MC-21 will soon be certified and enter service in Russia and then the EU, with the fifth or the first production model rolling off the line late next year. Into the future, UAC has also suggested it could build an MC-21-400 that could seat 250 seats and cater to that mythical middle of the market that airlines all apparently crave. It remains to be seen, however, if they can beat Airbus and Boeing to the punch. 
So one of the key questions that keeps getting asked is how exactly does the MC-21 compare to the Airbus A320 and the Boeing 737? The MC-21-300 can fly up to 211 passengers in a high density configuration to a range of 3,200 nautical miles. The Boeing 737 MAX 8, the nearest competitor, can fly 200 passengers to a range of 3,500 nautical miles, and the Airbus A320neo can fly 195 passengers in a crushing high-density configuration to a range of 3,500 nautical miles. The MC-21 is wider than both and has enough room for its aisles that two crew carts can pass each other, and has plenty of room below for cargo, which we have seen is very lucrative in this day and age. Age. Plus, we can't forget that the UAC has the benefit of the learnings from the Boeing 737 and Airbus A320 programs and using new principles in aircraft design as well as the latest technology to build what could very well be a superior aircraft. However, the Boeing 737 and Airbus A320 have an incredible track record and something that airlines have learned to trust. For Russia, only time will tell if they're able to produce all of these airframes and restore what was once a glorious aviation industry. Thanks so much for watching the video today. It's about time we spoke about the Russian aviation industry, and in this video, it has only been the absolute tip of the iceberg. If you want to know more about the MC-21 and explore the 3D model we use today, then we have a companion piece on our new website, linked down in the description below, with a quiz to boot. Come and check it out and let me know what you think in the comments. And if you want to support the channel, see videos ad-free and early where available, discover behind the scenes and chat with other patrons, then we have a link in the description to our Patreon page. And that's it, I finished my spiel and I hope you have a fantastic holiday. Thanks so much for watching.